you know, all that shining stuff you see there is going to be bearing material. Alright, it's so a little bit better view. This was a clean drain pan prior to draining the oil filter out. So, we have quite a bit of bearing material that just made its way through. So I believe this confirms my suspicion that we have a cam bearing that is seized to the camshaft. There's no knocking noise, so I'm really not believing that this is going to be a bottom end uh, bearing. I believe this is from the cam. But, uh, we're discussing now whether we want to attempt to remove this engine and rebuild it, or if I'm going to try to source them another engine for this bus. And there's also a possibility that the bus might get parted out or scrapped. So we'll have to see what the customer decides. You know, start the bike before we start putting the new pipes on so you guys can hear what the stock ones with the baffles drilled out sound like. Watch those pipes are slitted from the front pipe. It's going to be even worse, man. Actually, I think it's going to get better. No, oh, yeah, you're probably right. It's better. I was going to say, this tune on this bike is pretty rich for the pipes. all that mounts these two, just the two bolts on the bottom and then the clamp. set of slip-ons I am really happy with the way that makes the bike sound I'm also glad that I no longer have chrome pipes on there now all I have left to do is to get some black push rod tubes for it but I'm gonna go grab my helmet and go for a ride because I want to go ride this thing and see what these are gonna sound like when I'm actually riding all right we're back from the test drive so for a free set of slip-ons these make my bike sound exactly like I wanted perfect volume perfect amount of like pops and crackles on d-cell the old pipes really didn't do that, and that's part of what I was looking for with the new set of pipes. Uh, as you saw in the video earlier, Junior just got a new set of Vance and Hines short shots for his bike. So these were the slip-ons off his, so that I could just have them, so I threw them on mine. And I'm pretty happy with them. I mean, I'd love to get a set of short shots for this bike, but just for the price, for two pieces of metal and a baffle, they're just not worth it for me on this bike right now. But I am going to throw a data log on it and go for a ride. This thing is already tuned, so I should be good on AFRs and stuff. 
but run a data log just to be sure to make sure that we're not going too lean with these pipes because this is a pretty big increase in exhaust flow over the old ones. But tomorrow is a streetcar takeover's launch party at Twin Peaks. So tomorrow night we're going to cruise the Harleys out there and uh, go hang out and see some streetcars on the dyno and stuff. Then uh, Saturday, I've got the entire day, I'll probably be at Streetcar Takeover, so there's going to be some content from that in the next couple days here. Update on the Wonder Lodge engine. Um, I spent a good few hours today looking for rebuild kits for that engine or a replacement engine to put in it. There really isn't many options out there right now. I can't find any 534s for sale as an individual engine. I found a couple trucks with them, but it's not going to be cheap to pick up a truck to pull the engine out of for this bus. It's just not going to be worth it. As far as a rebuild kit, I found one company that sells a rebuild kit for it, but it doesn't have main bearings or pistons. Those have been discontinued. I did find a new old stock crank for sale with bearings, so that would fix the bottom end, but I still don't have pistons for it. When this engine was running, I noticed quite a bit of blow-by, and I'm going to guess by the time we get it apart and get it cleaned up, it probably will need the cylinders board. So, if I can't find pistons, and I'm going to have to go through all that work to find bearings for the bottom end and have to purchase a crank, even if our crank is fine, which I won't know until I take it apart. That rebuild kit before any machining or parts and labor will be over $2,000. And that's that's going to be getting up there in price by the time you figure it would be at least $1,000 at the machine shop. My labor to pull the engine and build it would be at least $2,000. I mean, that, that's two or three times what the bus is worth right now. Uh, as far as swapping it goes, the cheapest vehicle I've found with an engine in it is going to be a little over $3,000 just to get a hold of a truck with the engine in which we could scrap or part out the truck when we're done. But that's going to take time, and we'd have to send someone to go get the truck. It's in Kansas, so it's going to be a little bit of a drive to go get it and bring it home if it can make the trip. Um, so I don't necessarily know if that's really going to be a realistic option. And then the customer had also asked about possibly swapping it to a diesel. And I told him that just the amount of time and money that we're going to have to put into it to swap it, to plan on $15,000 in three months. Uh, we can't do it where it is. It's going to have to get towed out of where it's at and brought somewhere that I can work on it more consistently. Uh, so to tow it, it's going to need new tires in the back. No towing place is going to touch it with the tires that are on it. So over $1,000 just to put you know, 211R225s mounted on the back of it, plus five or $600 in towing. It, no matter what we do, it's it's not going to be a cheap fix for this bus. So I sent the customer an email tonight with some prices and some options, but I'm going to guess that this project's going to end here and this bus is either going to get scrapped or parted out. But when he makes a decision, I will let you guys know. Uh, I mean, for all we know, he might rebuild it, so there could be more content on it, but my guess is that that's going to be the end of this bus.